Hello. I hope I can succeed in turning this video into two chapters. I never tried it before, so if it works, this video will be in two sections. And the first section will be discussing new information that came to light after I made my last video about the Ngozi Fulani or Marlene Headley, if you prefer, uh, affair in Buckingham Palace. And the second section, which will probably be quite a short one at the end, will be about, uh, well, it'll be a fashion critique of what she was wearing, which might be rather fun. At least, I hope it will be. And if that's all you're interested in, uh, you might wish to jump to that. But I beg you not to. And uh, whatever you do, please leave a like. All right. So that's the, the, first, the, the first thing. I wanted to say to you. Right, now I'm going to put a picture of uh, Marlene Headley up here. She's in a group of three people and I'll tell you what, I'll leave you guessing as to which one I'm talking about. So, as I said, a few things came up after I'd made my last video about the storm in the Twitter cup and uh, the froth of hypocrisy and self-advertising that resulted from it. I'll start with saying what I would have done if I'd been at an official function and I believe that one of the hosts had been, well, disrespectful in some way, uh, then the first thing I would have done would have been to write a letter to whoever had organised the function uh, or who had who, or whoever had invited that particular insulting person to the event. As the head of a charity, Miss Headley would have had access to addresses and channels that most people, like me for instance, would not. So she could probably have got straight through to the palace itself with little trouble. She could have reported the conversation to them and pointed out what she thought was unacceptable. Perhaps, judging by the illiteracy of her charity's homepage, perhaps she didn't feel confident enough about actually writing to the palace, which is strange, of course, considering that her reporting of the conversation with Lady Hussey was impeccably written and, according to her, word perfect. Hmm. Just saying. The second thing I have to ask about this incident is what was the purpose of her reacting in the way that she did? Was it to give Lady Hussey the opportunity to learn better or more tactful behaviour or was it simply to victimise her? Well, let's go through the steps again. If she'd done this privately, then the lady would have had a chance to well, re-evaluate what she did, perhaps see the error of her ways and might have learnt something from the experience, if indeed there was anything to be learnt. But the first thing that Miss Headley did, a uh, picture of her here with two other people, guess which? Oh, just a minute, I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, as my mother said, it's usually true if you sneeze when you're saying it. OK, so the first thing that Miss Headley did was to put it straight out on Twitter with her own interpretation, which by its very nature was going to be one sided and giving Lady Hussey no chance either to explain herself or to learn anything. She was straight away backed into a corner. Now, uh, just a minute, before I carry on, I have to tell you I'm Granny Opteryx. I am to be found on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. And if I suddenly disappear from YouTube, which is not altogether an impossibility, uh, then you'll find me on one of the other channels. You will also find me on Twitter, Gab and Parlour as at Granny Opteryx. And it's on Twitter, Gab and Parlour that I let you know when I've uploaded a new video because, and again with YouTube, uh, they often fail to inform people of new uploads. Uh, also, it would help if you would like this video and uh, share it and subscribe. Now, if you are subscribed on YouTube, check your subscription because 
that falls away as well. I've had lots of complaints from people writing in and telling me that suddenly I disappeared from their list of subscribed uh, channels. OK, how about that? Right, so the best thing you can do for my channel to help it grow is to share it and to like it and uh, to subscribe and uh, you can help me financially by buying me a coffee or uh, clicking one of the other links in the description. OK, so back to L'Affaire Edli. Uh, and I'll go back to that with a comment from Jordan Peterson. He once observed that when someone shows that they're determined upon causing chaos, you should believe that that's what they want to do. And in her actions, Headley obviously wanted to cause chaos. This woman is now taking lots of interviews uh, with the MSM. Oh, Christmas came early this year, didn't it, darling? She says that she didn't want anything to happen to Lady Hussey. After all, she's an elder. And the MSM interviewers nod sympathetically and gravely and never ask her why, therefore, the first thing she did was go public on Twitter. But that's because she's one of them, isn't she? As I've often said, I used to work for the BBC and hypocrisy is the very air that they breathe. And it must be such a joy for them to interview a hypocrite like them. They, after all, do talk the same language and it must be very relaxing to understand somebody so thoroughly. It's not just the BBC, though. I started to watch a talk radio interview conducted by Vanessa Feltz. Sorry, I couldn't stick with it to the end because I started to gag. She's an elder, said Headley. I don't want to cause harm to an elder. So I'm going to ask what Feltz did not ask, so far as I know, and all the others too. The question is, if you didn't want to cause harm to an elder, why the bloody hell did you put it straight out on Twitter then? No, all the MSN did was give her the validity which she knew would happen and which she craved. Uh, and she knew that would happen because she knew the sort of people they are. Apparently, this uh, charity head has refused sanctuary. She has turned away women se uh, seeking sanctuary in her domestic violence shelter. Uh, she has refused sanctuary to women whom she did not consider black enough. Is that not racism? And this is a registered charity. As I said, I know these people in the MSM and the reasons I couldn't get along with them was their hypocrisy their racism, yes, it was real racism, but very delicately hidden. And their greed. And now even the royal family are succumbing to the supine obedience to Twitter justice. And I have just one thing to say to our dear royal family. You are supposed to be above and away from politics. If we want a chief wokes person, we can elect a president and apparently that's a job anyone can do. Now, I hope this will be the second chapter. On to fashion. If it isn't, then sorry, it meant I, I couldn't handle the new format. On to fashion. I've said before that fashion might be regarded as a frippery, but it's a lot more than that. It's also a signal. It's a thermometer of the state of society. So here's my take on the outfit Headley was wearing for her appointment in Buckhouse. Let's get that picture up. OK, so here are three ladies, and I suppose you uh, might have got the idea that the middle one is Miss Headley. Now, next to her is another lady wearing dreadlocks as well. But it look well, it, it seems that way. I mean, the photo isn't that distinct, but it does look like that short hair, shoulder length hair is in dreadlocks and it's smart. There's nothing wrong with well maintained dreadlocks. They look very, uh, yeah, they look very smart. But Headley's dreadlocks are anything but. They are a bird's nest mess and they're piled up here and dangling down there. And I may say dangling down in front of her um, name tag. Uh, 
Now, maybe she's ashamed of her name tag because, after all, she is using a, a name that she hasn't even officially changed. So she is there under sort of false pretenses in any way. And, uh, and, and as I say, she's a bit of a mess. Now, I want you to look at the, the rest of this thing. From that photograph, it looks like she is not wearing anything from here on up. But she is. She's wearing a sweater or a top of some sort that's in a colour that very much uh, that is very close to her skin tone. So the general impression she's trying to give is that she's wearing uh, what she uh, probably thinks of as some sort of an African garb. I did a little bit of research before I started this video and I looked at different sorts of traditional African dress. Now modern African dress, yeah, shoulders are bare, but traditional dress is uh, nearly, I haven't seen one that didn't involve some sort of covering on the lady's shoulders and often uh, covering on the hair as well. Right, so you see that, that brown sweater top thing she's wearing. You will notice she's wearing a very thick necklace of shells around there, which I assume, again, she believes is some sort of an African or African inspired piece of jewellery. Well, that necklace is actually there to hide the neckline of the top so as to give the impression that she isn't wearing anything and and she um if you notice she has placed herself behind the other ladies so you can't really see what that top bit is now this is a woman who knows a bit about optics obviously okay uh, going down so right, okay just before I carry on so she is she is faking a an open uh, topless not topless dress you know a shoulder free dress or whatever by strategic placement of some sort of what well, natural primitive type jewelry okay and then she's wearing a, a very badly leopard printed dress now, leopard prints are associated with Africa, but so f far as my experience has led me to see, they're, they're worn by officials in official capacities. So I saw some uh, government minister, I don't know where he was from, but he was an African in an African country and he was talking into a microphone and he was wearing a, a leopard skin over his shoulder. And uh, one of my sons was watching it with me and he said, uh, that looks odd. And I said, why? Yeah, he said a man wearing a leopard skin talking into a microphone. And I said, listen, kid, that is no worse than a man wearing, a judge wearing a, a, an 18th century wig and a medieval gown talking into a microphone in a courtroom. Yeah, everybody wears clothing that reflects their history in Africa, uh, being a good hunter or being at the head of a group of good hunters was a uh, an important thing. And that leopard skin uh, told people that he would got himself a leopard, which is by no means an easy thing to do. Right. So officially, I've seen men in Africa wearing leopard skins as a sort of sign of their office or as an indication of their importance or something like that. I have never seen a woman wearing a leopard skin. I mean, if, she, if there was a female minister taking on, I haven't seen this, but I could imagine a female minister taking on a certain position might wear a leopard skin again to indicate that's where she is, but not leopard skin dresses. So that uh, print is just, well, frankly, insulting uh, to Africans and African style because Oh, well, it's a hideous dress, uh, but that's something else. Now, she is also wearing gold shoes, if you notice that little pointy shoe uh, poking out the bottom of her dress. Now, uh, this is a uh, fashion hint from me. You don't wear gold shoes to an afternoon party. You just don't do it. And I doubt Africans would wear, African women would wear gold shoes either in this sort of a situation in Africa. So, you know, the whole thing is is a mashup and an insulting mashup of African dress. And uh, altogether, the, the general effect is, well, generally speaking, 
in a, tr a traditional English society, and I suppose you could say that Buckingham Palace is uh, just about as traditional as you can get, dressing in sort of evening party wear for an afternoon do is the sort of thing you expect of women of uh, certain reputation. Yeah, I, I honestly can't go further than that. Well, work it out for yourselves. Right, well, that's it. That's my take on uh, the new information that came uh, after I made my previous visit video and also uh, my little uh, analysis of the outfit she's wearing. Right, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.